I want to talk about our um, lessons uh, that we learned by building a decentralized application on top of Light Client. Uh, who of you here um, is fairly, like, who of you know what is a Light Client? Like, kind of, if you think you know what's like fairly well, what's a Light Client? Okay, it's like half of the person. So I will be a bit slow at the beginning just to make sure we are all on board on why uh, we want to use a light client actually. By the way, I will use the words light client, light node. For me, it's the same um, because we're talking about a node. So uh, just two words about myself. I'm Thibault, I'm working at Parity. Um, I'm a front-end dev and I work on Parity Feather, which I will talk about right now. I work also on Parity Signer, which I had a talk uh, about before. Pretty interesting, you should check it out. And right now I'm actually working a lot on Polkadot.js and, and UI. Um, so this talk is about three things. We want to understand first why we want to build or use light clients. Then I will show you how to hack on a library that we made uh, that's called Light.js. And then in the end I'll, talk, I'll show you a bit more about Feather, this uh, application that we built on top of a light client. Here, you can see I use light node inside an Electron app. Light node, light client, same thing. So let's start why light clients are important. So first of all, you probably all know, but running a full node is not as um, simple as it could seem, or as simple as we hope uh, it would be when um, people built a, a node in the, in the first place. We thought, okay, everybody should be able to run a full node on a, on a laptop, right? Well, it's not really possible anymore, so what do, what people do when you want to build a light client, or sorry, when you want to build a decentralized application, you do not connect to a full node, you connect actually to Infra, or to a third party service that provides you a full node to access the blockchain. And the thing is, um, Infra is super awesome, like you can build an application, connect to the blockchain within a couple of minutes, that's really, really nice, like it helps a, a ton the community to, to grow. But there are many problems in there. Um, yeah, those are numbers that, I mean, actually kind of old numbers is probably much higher now. Um, how many dApps have been developed using Infra? How many billions of requests Infra is actually serving? The problem, you can all see that. We call these decentralized applications, but we're all connecting to one server here, like or one set of server that is owned by a company that is not decentralized. That's that's actually not the right thing to do, right? So, so what is a light client? It's a node that stores header but will remain trustless. So it's a node, so it's something that does access the blockchain and can give you many information about the blockchain, can help you do almost anything a full node would help you do from a decentralized application perspective. But it is not decentralized. Uh, it is, sorry, decentralized and it is not centralized. It is, it is just, and it does not, um, so it, it's not as secure as a, a full node. I will not talk about this uh, in this talk because it's just it gets too complex. But it still is trustless, so you cannot get um, fake data or something. You know, it's decentralized and it it actually verifies all the requests and all the information that that it gets. So um, just a couple, um, yeah, numbers to show the differences between a full node and a light uh, node or light client. Uh, the sync time is a couple seconds if you're lucky. If you're not so lucky, maybe a couple minutes, but we're not talking about hours or days, right? As long as you have internet. I'm not talking about this Wi-Fi here because it could be, could be minutes or days here. Yeah. I tried it. <laughs> I did uh, sync a light node in the Chinkansen, for instance, with my 4G, right? It took a couple minutes, but it was, it was doing, doable. Uh, the state size, so how many um, gigabytes or whatever are you gonna download? Uh, on your mobile phone or on your PC with a light client, it's gonna be zero. It does not source the state. With a full node, of course, that's its job. It's gonna have gigabytes and gigabytes of state. And the database that you're gonna have, again, on your, um, on your desktop or on your mobile, it's gonna be tens of gigabytes. People are talking about terabytes. Uh, I won't go into this um, debate, but anyway, for full nodes and light client, it's, we're talking about couple hundreds of megabytes actually. So what is a light client or why do we want to use a light client? So today you have on the right the nodes, the full nodes that are connected to each other and they form the Ethereum network. And you have your decentralized application that is there and sits there. And 
when you want to connect, when you connect to, say, Infura, you connect to one of these nodes, or let's say a set of nodes that is owned by a company, and you trust this person. So this person can actually turn bad, and what they can do is they cannot change your transactions or something. They cannot, you know, spend your money on your behalf or something. That's okay, but still they can track you. They can know exactly who you are with your IP. They can see, okay, this person is using this address all the time. Like they, they can do many mean, mean stuff or they can censor you, right? Infra, they are nice, we know them, and they actually want to get decentralized more. Uh, they had talks about it. I'm just saying, this is not the right way to onboard people. Uh, um, we all know that, okay, we, we want to care about decentralization in the space. That's why we want to bring peop more people to the space. So let's, let's do it right. And what we can do is, so the, the new dots here are light clients. So they are connected to um, full nodes. And what we want to do is actually embed a light client in our DAP. This is what we did, and this is what we want actually to um, let people do more. Um, so to let people embed a light client and use a light client uh, in their decentralized application, we built um, a library that is called LightJS. So it's super light, it's for light client, everything is light. And uh, here's, what, here's how um, a stack uh, that you would have today for your normal app. So basically you have your UI in JavaScript most probably, using React, Angular, whatever, then you embed uh, Web3.js, which you want to use to just send transactions and, and do stuff on the blockchain. Uh, this Web3.js, one of the first things you do with Web3.js is uh, setting a provider. You have new provider, and there you most probably use some URL from Infra with a token that you have. And then Infra, so this centralized service node that you have to trust in this case, will talk to Ethereum. And what we want to do, so yeah, these guys can eventually censor you or um, or track you. And so what, wanna, what we want to do with this LightJS is actually instead of Web3.js, you use this LightJS, and this will talk to a light node on your own inside your DAP actually, and you will talk directly to the uh, Ethereum network. So the difference here is that you remove right, the centralized node and you put the light node actually inside the DAP, right? Um, so this um, LightJS library is a high-level reactive and easy to use library. Um, we'll talk about it uh, just a bit. Uh, we are, well, how do you install it? Just like any other library you probably installed today. Uh, it's from the parity name face and slash light.js. So uh, let's have a look a bit at some code. I hope you can see that all right. Um, so that's a really simple, simple code. Um, so you can see that we import light and we import uh, balance off and block number. And those balance off and block number have a dollar um, behind. And it means they are, these are observable. And just like you would do with Web3.js today, you would just do light set provider with your provider. And then you can do with these observables, block number, you can subscribe for instance, and this will give you a block number that you can log. And so in this, in this little program, we'll just subscribe with the block number and just log the current block number. And we do kind of the same with balance off. So balance off, you wanna say which address you wanna see the balance off. And then I don't know if, you, if you're aware or if you know how to use Reactive uh, or RxJS, um, but basically you can get what's the result of balance off and pipe it and do something with this, um, with this um, result. So what we're gonna do is this balance is gonna be formatted. Oh, you have a question? Yeah, just one. Balance off actually just being updated? So the question is, will balance off will be actually uh, a stream and updated? And the answer is yes. And this is the nice thing with ob observables, and, and uh, you, you'll see that in a, in a second. So the balance off will be you know, not formatted nicely, so what we wanna do is from way we wanna format it, basically. And then what we do is we do the same as, as before, we subscribe to this, and we just log it. So what happens is when you just run this in the console, it will just go like this, current block, blah, 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 my balance, and then it updates and then it updates. You change the balance, boom, the balance will show the new balance, and then it updates, and it goes on. So this is an observable, 
And well, yeah, that's RxJS. Like this is not what we built specifically. We just built on top of this, and and this is awesome. That's why we we use it. Um, so. LightJS, I said, is light. Um, it's actually extremely simple. We did not go crazy with the amount of things we want to uh, support. We actually just support what we need and what the community up to now has told us they need. So we have 12 functions, and that's it, right? We have like super basic things, the block number, the, you know, you can post transaction, post raw transactions, or already signed transactions. Uh, you can get some contracts, you can get, you know, like, my balance, the version info of the node, and stuff like this. Um, so just to see a, an overview of the differences between, for instance, Web3.js um, and Light.js. Um, so the account management, the way it's done, uh, no, sorry, the asynchronous management with Web3.js, you would use Promise. We use observables. Um, the coverage of the RPCs um, that, we, that we support we keep it very, very simple, right? And if you need some more, please just let us know. Um, and of course, and this is the very important thing, Light.js Light is built, the way we have it in mind is it's built to be used on top of Light Client. And it brings a lot of things that, um, yeah, that do not come uh, uh, embedded in Web3.js, and I'll talk about it uh, right now. So. So behind the scene, Glide.js uses the least possible resources on the light client. So what you're gonna do today, uh, just before I showed you, okay, what's the latest, um, what's the latest header, for instance, or what's my balance, for instance? Your balance will not change every second, right? The block number, the block time is five, 15 seconds on Ethereum. Does not make sense to just bother the node, you know, every second on 50, 500 milliseconds, right? Today you can do that with Ethereum, but it does not bring anything. So Light Client, the Light.js uh, library will do this for you, right? We'll actually get just a push notification, we'll not have pull, so you will get the, um, the latest uh, information when it's there, not when you ask for it, because sometimes developers just don't know everything, and that's fine, and that's why we wanted to build Light.js this way. So it fetches states on your head and not whenever you want, so it's just gives you new information whenever there is new information, actually. It handles the subscriptions um, to, to the node for you, it handles cash, and it keeps the amount of uh, network calls to the minimum. But to the, I mean, it's still, it's still there's, you know, you won't be like uh, outdated, you won't get outdated information. It just does the thing like in an efficient way, right? So our goal, and the reason why we built all of this, our goal is to embed light clients everywhere as much as possible and to facilitate a third mass adoption while maintaining decentralization. Because we do not want to, to just trade this off, right? So because of this, um, we, you know, probably Parity has uh, built a node, and this node can be run as a light node, as a light client. The thing is we wanted to use it and to see how things work and we wanted to embed like, let people embed like client everywhere. So that's why we built Feather. So Feather is an application on top of a light client. Uh, and I will show you just, I'll show you it in a minute. Um, I wanna just talk very briefly about the stack. So uh, just like we said before, so we have uh, UI, uh, UI in React. We use Light.js to interact with a, a light node that is inside an Electron app. And all this app will interact with directly with the Ethereum network without third party service in between. Um, so a truly decentralized uh, wallet is what Feather is. It used to be not the only one because Mist used to be also using a light wallet. Unfortunately, it's not possible, a light client, sorry. Unfortunately, it's not um, available anymore due to other reasons. Um, so to my knowledge, Feather is the only uh, application, unfortunately, on uh, top of a light client. So it uses Light.js, as I said. Uh, it's bundled with a parity Ethereum light client, uh, and it syncs in a couple minutes, depending on the Wi-Fi. Um, we have other interesting um, libraries that you might want to see. Uh, one of them is called Parity Electron. It's a small library to start and stop uh, Parity Ethereum from a Node.js environment. Um, and you will see the UX and everything about Feather uh, right now. 
So here I just launched Feather, and this is what happens. At the bottom, you will see that it starts syncing right now, and it just shows you, you know, like, and it shows you the, how, how far you are, and shows you an empty page because you have no account. So I'm gonna check, create a new account. This looks like a green cat, so I'm gonna name that green cat. You know, and now it's, it's getting synced, you know, like at the bottom you can see sometimes. So we show the, you know, the mnemonic, blah, blah, blah. You have to be careful with the mnemonic. Please type the mnemonic again, and then you're gonna have the password and, and just to secure your account. And it's syncing in the, in the, in the background. So it's, you know, it's not extremely fast, but it's all right. And I can also, for instance, import an account using, I don't know, a JSON. So here. My window was a bit uh, not on the right side, but I'm just importing a JSON and just shows, you know, the name and stuff. And um, yeah, so by the time I'm done with this process, actually I'm done syncing. You can see it, it's synced. And now if I click on an account, it takes a bit of time to get the balance. Again, it could be super quick. This Wi-Fi was not like awesome. Okay, now it's updated. And I have a near C20 token as the other one. Uh, the other uh, balance. So here, for instance, I can add, uh, I don't know, another token, so it's gonna be a fake token, it's my token, so it's just cheap coin. And yeah, you know, at some point it just updates. Um, and to send a transaction, so I'm just gonna click on this one, and I'm just gonna, you know, say to whatever, this amount, I can select the amount of ways, so here it does some call, right? It does like, okay, how much this transaction is gonna cost, etc. It does some calls in the background. And then, right, you send just a transaction, like nothing, nothing very, right. So I'm just gonna cut this because it takes some time to send the transaction, but you, you get it. Um, so what do we do now with this application? Um, so it has been audited. This is the first time I say it, actually. It has been audited this summer by Trail of Bits. I'm super happy because um, uh, there was no big, uh, critical uh, problem found. We fixed actually all the problem now and we're gonna have a release probably next week with everything fixed. And we want to give this to the community if anyone is interested to actually keep this going because um, this is not something we're gonna uh, go further on. We do not have the bandwidth for this. And yeah, so if anyone's interested, please talk to me and uh, we'll be happy to, to yeah, go on with, with Feather. Uh, because I have a bit of time, I'm also having a shameless plug here. We're hiring a full stack developer. We have uh, awesome other stuff to do um, with light clients, with many, many things. And please, yeah, talk to me or anyone at Parity. That's about it. We have a couple minutes for questions. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions.